Cheers! Welcome, Welcome to, to Movie Pitches! Episode 87! Yeah. So, tonight we're reviewing... <clears throat> Everybody Wants Some! Everybody Wants Some! Rated R! <laughs> this movie was infuriating for me. It's, yes, it's the new Richard Linklater... Linklater 80s... Masturbatory, egotistical... 80s... <laughs> Extravaganza. So the movie is about a a baseball kid team oh, who's right. a freshman on a baseball team at a college. So we saw the trailers for this movie, and I was like, "That looks terrible," and well, I had no interest in seeing it whatsoever until I read this article that was talking about like the unintentional homoeroticism throughout this film. Yeah, and. While that article in many ways was true, it was not nearly entertaining enough no. to like justify seeing it for that no. purpose. Yeah. So I'm pretty pissed. <laughs> not homoerotic enough. Not, no. <laughs> no. Although fairly homoerotic. Yes. <laughs> and there were at least a couple butts in jock straps. <laughs> there was quite a few butts in jock straps. There was a lot of talk about pitchers and yep. catchers and how I hate pitchers and how catchers are better and comparing this and that. And every time they said pitchers, I just laughed. Because <laughs> you're six. <laughs> a six-year-old wouldn't understand the no. nuances of that joke. That's true. Maybe in this day and age, I don't know. Maybe. Kids grow up so fast. Anyway, anyway. My biggest problem with this movie is I hated every single person in it. You know, that wasn't even my problem with it. Okay. Um, I mean, I'll let you elaborate. Well, just like, I, I, okay, I didn't hate, actively hate anyone. That would imply I had a strong emotion towards anything in this film. I, I was like so completely uninterested in anything any of the characters had to say or were doing. That was, <laughs> like, so my issue with this film is that it shouldn't exist. <laughs> No, absolutely like, not. Here's the thing. It's 2016. The last thing that we need yes. is a movie about, like, white, hetero jocks in their heyday in the 80s <laughs> being dumb straight boys. Yeah. That's the last movie that we need. Really? When you get a lot of dudes together, this is what we started to realize when we actually got around the girls. The problem is you start, the testosterone starts swirling, our minds start just going on the same like dude wavelength, and then there's no concept of right, wrong. Who's this movie for? It's for 50 year olds that miss the good old days of, Yikes! You know, that's the only thing that I can think of. But it was so. There's movies from the '80s that are like sure, slightly sexist, but this was very sexist to me. Like, to the point where it was like you're actively trying to make this sexist, right? No, they were just remembering what it was like to be a Gross. a jock in every, 1983. Every woman in this movie was either a dumb slut, yep, or a bitchy, smart girl. And, I mean, that's how they presented them, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Just, they that were, was they the were... thing. And it was all about, you know, getting Poontang and... They said Poontang, by the way. I don't care. Hey, ladies. Party later tonight at the baseball houses. You should be investing this energy elsewhere. Lesbians. It was really the most basic of basicness. It was like you were a fly on the wall in a college frat dorm in the 80s. And if that sounds interesting to you, we might not be friends, but maybe you'll like this movie. <laughs> I was just... The best... I mean, I was so bored. I, throughout the film, was pointing out things in the background yeah. of scene, paying attention to extras, like, focusing on their outfits, because it... What... Because... Legitimately, what they were talking about was boring. Yeah, all not even just like, oh, I don't like baseball, like... Even when they were talking about baseball. Because it was basic was straight bro shit. <laughs> There's not a lot going on. Right. The conversation is baseball, chicks, and... Beer. Getting drunk. Yeah. And, and competing. 
Yeah, it's like, like who's like who's bigger. bigger exactly. Let's talk about our cocks. How big our cocks are compared to the other guy's cock. Is it bigger than the other guy's <laughs> cock? I wish they had taken them out and measured. That would have been more exciting. It would have been more homoerotic. <laughs> Certainly that. There was a lot of short shorts. There was a lot of short There's shorts. There's a lot of batches. Lots of bulges and batches. <laughs> What's a batch? Well, I used to call, when I would watch a bad movie and there was like real big cod pieces, I, we would just call mm. it, oh, there was a big batch. I don't know why. Okay. That's just what I used to call it. So an inside term there. Inside baseball. <laughs> um, there was uh, actually a fair amount of midriff. <laughs> Basically, this whole almost nearly two hour film is the 12 minutes baseball scene from Sleepaway Camp. Basically, yes. Like, you would be Each better and off... Each die, Ricky. Each and live, Bill. Like, you would be better off watching that glorious 12 minutes yeah. from Sleepaway Camp. Yeah. Because it is glorious. I mean, I learned more about baseball in Sleepaway Camp. Yep. I learned more about, like, humanity. Yeah, sure. Emotions. Yeah. I mean, you Characters. really, I, you don't learn anything. Well, I had a really hard time, I, I, could, I could, they looked different enough that I could be like, oh, that's clearly that person and not a different person, but that's I That's a different 40-year-old than that other 40-year-old? We'll get to that. Okay. I did not know anyone's name. They kept being like, Jake, come over here. That no, was the main character. Whatever, was it? I think so. Yeah? Jake. They, there was a lot of characters. Oh my god. A yes. lot of names yes. being thrown around. A lot of bros. So, everyone in this film is at least 28. Oh my god, they're at least 38. I mean, there was a wide range yes. of older actors. Like, what's, what is Richard Linklater trying to tell us? I don't know. Is he trying to tell us that these guys... Are entertaining, are good, are something to strive for, are his friends, are like, I just couldn't figure it out. Like, like Dazed and Confused, which this movie is a pseudo sequel to, right. I don't know. Dazed and Confused, you have the asshole bully jocks who you're clearly rooting against, and you have the outsider underdogs. Who but you're this like, didn't yeah, have any of that. They were just all the assholes. That's <laughs> so cute. Like, Basically. And the, literally the whole movie, I kept being like, who am I supposed to be rooting for? But also rooting for for what? Nothing. Not literally. Like I can't. I, there's there's nothing. nothing. There have been so many movies that we've reviewed where I've been nothing like, happens. nothing happens in this movie. But literally, nothing. The only thing that happens in this movie yeah. is that he meets a girl. And he goes on a date with her once. But we don't... That plot line doesn't officially take off until an hour and 20 minutes into the movie. You don't see them play baseball until an hour and 20 minutes into this movie. Oh my God. College is the greatest. Well, this movie is trying to be like a... Like a... Like a experience, right? Like, it's like... Not plot driven. It's like you're there, you're in this era, but then the dialogue had better be fucking great. Right? There was a lot of like high school level philosophizing about like life. Like, one of the last scenes, him and the girl who like each other for inexplicable reasons, she's like, What'd you write for your college essay? And he's like, Well, I compared Sisyphus to baseball. And she's like, Oh my god. Which also, who talks about that? If, but still? Some, if some guy was like, I wrote my college essay about Sisyphus and baseball, I'd be like, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> you know when you're the designated driver and everyone else is drunk and you're like, this sucks. That was this whole movie. You were like, well, I'm not there. Yeah. I'm not high. No. Nope. It would be helpful. Yeah. But I'm not. No. Even if it were, it would still be fucking boring. Well, yeah, but maybe I would have fallen asleep. <laughs> that would have been nice. Maybe. Just been like, oh, nice snooze, yeah. Oh and then, like, the soundtrack would have at least, like, made my dreams more interesting. This the soundtrack movie, was geez. This movie felt like an excuse for a good soundtrack. Everyone in this movie looked, like, ever so slightly familiar. Yeah. Where I could be like, that looks like somebody. Was the girl the... So the main girl in mm -hmm. it, who's in 10 minutes of the movie, is the chick from Vampire Academy. Oh my god. Zoe Deutsch. That's so funny. Amazing. It took she me, was good. She was totally fine. Yeah. It literally took me 
nearly the entire film to be like, oh my god, it's the girl from Vampire Academy. There's literally a character who looks like the cowboy from The Village People. Like, I will put them side by side, yep. and you will be like, which one is which? Because they looked the damn same. So you know another person. Okay. You know who the guy with the dark hair who seemingly was like the, the guy in charge? Yes, the cute one. You know who he was? He was the boy next door! Oh! That's so funny. Right? Wow, that's a good transformation for him. Yeah, because... But also, he was kind of cute in The Boy Next Door, aside from the psychoness. I mean, he's relatively aside attractive. Aside from the murdering, yes. Yeah. Of yeah. course. And the, the dry hump raping, yes. The dry hump raping. He was... I, I couldn't even entertain the idea that any of these characters were attractive. No, I didn't really want to have so sex with any of them. So bored by all of them. Yeah. Okay, so like the opening scene, this is a piece of dialogue. You decide if you think you want to hang out with these people. They're talking about a waterbed, and they go, man, fucking on a waterbed is like fucking a girl on top of a really fat girl. This is just like, you know, wobbling around. Like, that's our introduction to our protagonist. Great joke. It was like, whoa. Like, whoa. These are clearly our asshole 80s villains, and our heroes will show up later, right? Nope. No, they won't. Like, it was so just like, I'm not gay, I swear. <laughs> but also, like, let's hang out in our underwear together and, like, like get real close. Like, I don't know. It was... <laughs> Maybe that's what guys do. I mean, they do. Like, it was very real, is the thing. <laughs> it's stupid. I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I feel like, like... I know that, like, okay, girls don't. Just like, oh my god, I'm in my underwear, because, like, for reasons. Like, no, that doesn't really happen. I feel like... But do, maybe guys do that. I feel like, though, like, that situation was very realistic. Just like, you can't... Clothes can't handle this body. I don't I know. I would think it's more of just, like, a comfort thing, mm. you know? Um, Their pants were very tight. They were very so tight. So maybe they just needed to air to, it out. Yeah. Um, what was that whole thing with, like, the cheese? Oh, right. He was so like... Boy Next Door is wearing some pretty awful maroon pants. And he keeps saying, everyone says, I've got the best cheese, as he's staring at his, his butt. butt. And is he's just a, like, I've got the best. Is that a euphemism for butt? I've Girls never heard that. say, I've got the good cheese. cheese. Not that he did I, have a pretty good butt, though. Not that I've ever heard. How come I mean, he wasn't in a jockstrap? Missed opportunities. Missed opportunities. <laughs> Speaking to like the homoeroticism. Okay. I guess what I would say is that I wouldn't be surprised mm -hmm. if at any point this movie just turned into like a gay porn. I like, mean, they all go to a watering hole. Just them. No women are present. And they're all like, yeah, man. And they're in jock, jock straps. And they're all like jumping into inner tubes and stuff. And I was like, and then they all had group sex in the woods. <laughs> oh, that's not what happened? But it seems like that would be the logical if, next scene. If that had happened, I would have been in no way been surprised. And I would have been quite impressed. I would have been like, you know what? This movie's pretty great. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm into it. Because then at least it would have been making some kind of statement. statement. The guy that looks like he's from the village people loses at ping pong, and he's like, fuck all of you, and he gets all pissed off. Wait, I thought that was the boy next door. No. No! The guy with the mustache? The, the guy from the village people... <laughs> so many mustaches. The guy from the village people <laughs> was the guy who got pissed about the ping pong thing. Oh. With the mustache. The guy with the cheese was the guy from Boy Next Door. Right, who then like gave the speech, who 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 hit the home run to the the raw dog. No, that that was the village people guy. No, they were the same guy. Right. <laughs> they were. It wasn't. No. The village people guy hit the home run. And, and he was like the captain of the team. He seemed. I mean, he was like. I'm gonna say conservatively 41 years old, um, he, he was, am I wrong? And then the guy at the end that was like picking numbers, I don't know, they're all the same person. Yeah, I was gonna say, I'm pretty sure you're talking about the same person. It was like, are they blonde with a mustache or brunette with a mustache? I don't, like, it was the same. Yep. <gasps> I just realized there's another parallel to Sleepaway Camp. So they do the whole like, 
Oh, close your eyes, bro. You you can't lift yep. like so they're playing a prank and they're like if you put your thumb on their on their like chest, chest they, they can't, can't get, get up. up. And so they're like, "Oh, I'll try it." And then when they he does get up, it's another guy's butt in his face. Homerotic. Which is hilarious. Oh my god, it's so funny. Um they do that in sleepaway camp. Do except, they're... you know, they're like 10-year-olds. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, not much has changed here. Also, in Sleepaway Camp, one of the kids pulls a knife on them after that joke, which is more entertaining than anything that's happened in this film. <laughs> Go watch Sleepaway Camp. Yeah. I really disliked this film. I really, really, really hated it. Like, I would give it a two. Whoa. Like, on Netflix, I'd be like, one is not, is too many. Or just be like, to give it a not interested. A not interested. I am not interested, Netflix. I'm... Irritatingly, annoyingly boring and pointless and heteronormative so, bullshit. So, yeah. Yes. All of the above. D ain't got time for that. Well, we did spend the time. I mean, we did. I, but re I regret. I really regret I it. I regret. I want that time back. <laughs> and money. We spent money on that. Thanks, Ugh. Richard Linklater. Oh, fuck. <laughs>